<laughs> I know. I mean, okay. Uh, anyways, let's try this. <laughs> let's try this one. It says draw the mechanism and organic products of the following SN1 reaction, and predict whether each product you draw is major or minor. So that already gives you kind of a clue as to what you may be thinking that you might be getting in an SN1 reaction. Maybe two different products. Okay. Um, not necessarily all SN1 reactions. But it does tell you that it's an SN1 reaction, so that's kind of nice. Um, you know that it's going to be substituting something for something else. Okay. So normally, um, in an organic chemistry reaction, you have two different types of molecules, right? What are those two types of molecules? Do you guys remember? Anyone? A nucleophile and electrophile, right? So we probably want to find those things. And we know in substitution reactions we do have those things, right? So do you remember in the substitution reaction what's the common electrophile? Hydroxyl or hydroxide. Well not electrophile. So that's the nucleophile, right? Yeah. So the electrophile is the alkyl halide in the substitution reactions, remember? So it's the thing with the good leaving group. You recall that? The thing with the good leaving group. Okay? So, um, this is a secondary alkyl halide. And um, that's good because we know primaries don't go through SN1 reactions. Okay? So it has to be either a secondary or a tertiary to do it. You also have to have Remember, a polar protic solvent, something that's going to pull the, um, the iodide from the alkane portion of the alkyl halide, okay? So it's going to help it separate. In this uh, reaction, the solvent is actually cyclohexanol there. Okay? That's the name of that molecule, cyclohexanol. So notice, hopefully guys, you notice this really kind of looks a lot like water, right? If you cover that up, you might not know if it's water or not, right? So it's water with, instead of two hydrogens, a cyclohexane ring has been substituted for one of the hydrogens. So it has similar properties to water, okay? So water is a good polar product solvent, remember, for SN1 reactions, it was good. So this has similar properties to that. So it influences this to separate, or what we say in terms of these substitution reactions, the leaving group to leave, right? You guys remember that? So what's the leaving group here? You guys remember? Thiodide, yeah. So how do we show that? So that curly arrow right there. Does, <clears throat> does the solvent participate in the, the first step of the SN1 reaction? No. Uh -huh. In fact, the SN1 reaction's rate determining step is the first step. Do you guys remember that? What would be the rate um, equation for an SN1 reaction? <coughs> so rate equals K, K times the concentration of Rx. So nothing else is influencing the rate except for the alkyl halide. So it's on, you're on camera now. <laughs> okay, so in fact, I'm just going to erase this for right now, okay, and put it into the second step. So, first step is over. Let's draw the products of that first step. What is the intermediate of these SN1 reactions called? Carbocation. Very good. Carbocation. So that's what we have, right? Hopefully that's what you drew. 
get the door. <laughs> okay, so what is the hybridization of that carbon? Does anyone remember? SP2. SP2, right? Because it's only got how many electron groups around it? Three, right? So it's trigonal planar, right? So um, the nucleophile, well, I gave it away. I was going to ask eventually what this was. This is the electrophile. But the nucleophile will be able to attack it from either the front face or the back face. You guys remember when you have a planar molecule, you can do that? So I only see two bonds here. What's the other bond? Yeah, it's the hydrogen. So if you want to, you can explicitly show that. You don't have to. But I'll show Okay, so now we're going to introduce the nucleophile. So this is the electrophile. So another way to write carbocation, shorthand, C plus, carbocation. Carbocations are always electrophiles in these reactions. The nucleophile, what is the nucleophile in the SN1 reaction? Water. Well, in that other one we saw, but in this one it's what? Well, you don't have to say the name, but what was it? It's the solvent, right? It's the solvent. Okay. So in this case, cyclohexanol was the solvent. Oh. You should know that the name of that molecule. If you don't know it, now you do. Okay, so this is the nucleophile, right, we said? So the nucleophile attacks the electrophile, right? So what portion of the nucleophile is going to attack it? The lone pair. The lone yeah, of course, right? <laughs> Crazy, right? Yeah. You guys look at me like, of course, the lone pair. <laughs> yeah, no lie. That's what I say. <laughs> Okay, so, so remember we said oftentimes you'll get two products from an SN1 reaction, right? Because it can attack from the front face or from the back face. Do you guys recall that? In this, in this particular instance, are you going to get two products? Yeah. Why not? It's a chiral. Yeah, so the molecule that you're going to be forming is a chiral because two, well, we'll draw it. Okay. Two of the groups okay. two of the groups that that carbon is attached to are the same thing to the cyclopentane ring. If you want, you can still draw that hydrogen if it makes you feel more comfortable. No problem. So is that the end of the reaction? What do we have to do? You can add your leaving group to the end of it. Oh, okay. Yeah, we'll put that there. Let's identify this, right? So this is the leaving group. Why do we call it the leaving group? Because it left right from the alkyl halo. But can we isolate this molecule here? No, it what do we have to do to it? Remove that proton. Yeah, deprotonate it, right? So what's going to be the thing that deprotonates? Solvent. The solvent, right? Because so. it's swimming in a sea of cyclohexanol. So there's a lot of it around. So. Are you going to tell us what the solvent is? I would have to in an SM1 or or I could give you the reactants and products and you would tell me the solvent. Okay? 
Is that going to be like John Swift, right? Potentially. <laughs> I would have prepared for it before I you. Okay, so let's just draw the product. Um, hopefully, you guys have drawn it already and just confirm it with what I draw. Oftentimes these, react, uh, these questions will ask you to put a box around the organic product. Let's see if we're still in camera here. Let's do that. Okay, but of course if you wanted to draw the protonated solvent too. Okay. okay, so there's only the one organic product in this reaction. Yeah. Question? No question? Are you sure? Well, you don't need to in things that are achiral. Okay, so it's oftentimes better to not put those things. If you have no stereocenters in your molecule, I would recommend you don't put voyages and dashes. Okay. That's a good question. Any other questions? <coughs> 